My name is Joe Peroni, and this is the Rise Above Project. <laughs> She's already on it. <laughs> so today is a really, really special day. As you can see, Lola has her hat on because she is having a party today, and all her friends are coming over. We've got uh, Baxter the Poodle, we've got Kubi, of course, the Chow, we have Nelson, the Pitbull Mix. And so why is Lola having a party today and it's not her birthday? And William. Oh, William. Oh, we have William the cat also, is also here for Lola's party. And this is because 13-year-old Lola the pug is celebrating, or we are celebrating her remission. Also her, her graduation from CHOP treatment. Uh, we'll get into that later of what CHOP treatment is. Uh, but first, uh, I want to have a little bit of t uh, a little discussion on the terms beating cancer and the terms uh, losing your battle with cancer, because I've always had a problem with this. So, like again, so today we're celebrating Lola's uh, remission and graduation. I don't want to say she beat cancer because I think that's disrespectful. Uh, listen, all living things die, and we all know people and animals that have died from cancer. And I don't want to act like it's a competition because being that all things die, it's, it's, it's not a fair comparison. Uh, if we want to think about beating cancer or winning or beating life, I think we can talk about it in a way that uh, Lola has helped to teach me this last six months is that you know, maybe we can face life or face cancer or difficult things without having any self-pity. You know, that's number one. Number two, how about we don't amplify the ailments and the negatives and we think about all the good things there are. And number three, if we can understand that all, all living things die, but we can also do it with courage and we don't have to whine about it. We understand that that's just a truth. So I think all of these things Lola has really reminded me of it. Uh, it's funny, she looks so much better now than she did six months ago. It's kind of fun, I'm watching her on the, the camera here. Her eyes are nice and clear, and she's not trying to scratch the lymph nodes on her neck. This is a good day. She likes her hat, too. And she likes her hat. You like your hat. <laughs> I like my hat, but I'm pink. So let, let's get to some of the basics, because I, um, when Lola was diagnosed with uh, cancer, I was looking around for some help, and you know, maybe some emotional support, and. I couldn't really find it that much, so um, hopefully, you know, maybe I can do that for somebody else. So Lola was diagnosed with high-grade multicentric lymphoma. That was on November 1st, 2020. At that time, she was given uh, two... <laughs> Whoops. Oh, no, no. Oh. She's, she's walking in front of the camera. Okay, so at that time, she was given two to four weeks to live if nothing else had changed or if she was resistant to treatment. Hey there, little one. So the symptoms at that time, uh, she had low energy, she had a decreased appetite, and she had swollen lymph glands or ly lymph nodes. And here's where I feel that uh, because I pet her a lot and you know I have a lot of guilt, so hopefully you know maybe this can help somebody out there. I didn't, I mean, obviously I know that living things have lymph nodes, but I didn't know that there was lymph nodes like on the back of the knees. So I didn't think to reach and squeeze in because I didn't notice that. And that was my fault. Uh, I take responsibility for that. Um, she had swollen lymph nodes, one or actually both in, in her neck but it was prominent on one side. And I thought it was like a pimple underneath because she would go to scratch it. And then there was like a cut on top. So I, I thought it was kind of like something that, you know, like a skin thing. And, and I didn't think that it was a lymph node. It's, I'm not a veterinarian. You know, I didn't think about that. And so I'll take responsibility for that as well. Uh, so that didn't trigger us to take her to the vet at that point. But uh, one night uh, she was breathing really hard. She was panting and I, I couldn't figure out why. She's not the type of dog to have a lot of anxiety, that's for sure. Uh, th then it got better in the morning. So I thought, okay, it's all better. And then it, no, then it got the same way the next night. And so the panting was a big symptom. And I didn't realize that her lymph nodes were getting so swollen, it was cutting off her airway. So on uh, Sunday, 
November 6, 2020, uh, went to the, uh, we decided that, that uh, she would get CHOP treatment because the first vet that we went to, they don't specialize in canine lymphoma or cancer. So we went to the other one and I decided to uh, start with the CHOP treatment. Now, one of the interesting things that happens, um, really it doesn't happen with me, but it has happened with my girlfriend and I'm not gonna try to figure out why. You know, maybe it's cause you know, I'm a man and people understand that, you know, <laughs> They're not going to influence me in any way, and I can draw really strong boundaries. Um, maybe that's it. Maybe it's a sexist thing. I don't know. I don't care. But the question kept coming up. Why would you put a 13-year-old dog through all of that? All of that meaning chemotherapy treatment. So I'm going to answer that because I think that that question stems from a lot of places. Number one, I think it's disrespectful. I would never ask somebody that question, number one. And number two, I think it's a lack of education. And number three, I think there's this hidden thought that because chemo costs a lot of money, that it's something in them, that if they had the money and they had the love and care, they probably would do it. But being that they don't have the money, they just kind of put it off as I'm hurting the dog somehow. So I'm going to answer to that just in case somebody else has to go through this and, you know, you're emotionally uh, down. And then when you hear this, it... it it causes even more pain. So I'm going to try to help you with that. So if we look at the evidence, and there's a lot of evidence, uh, most dogs who go through CHOP treatment, they do go into remission. That's number one. Number two, the chance of Lola having an improved quality of life and inc improving the length of her life is incredibly high. So when we look at that, we look at the chances are way better than 50-50. That makes... That's why. That's why I would put her through chemotherapy treatments. And the third one that I'd like to add to this, as she comes over closer, I'm going to try to talk over the top here. Uh, when I bought Lola, I, I made the decision right then that she's my responsibility. And at that time, I made the decision to do everything in my power to give her a good long life and to improve the quality of her life. So if there's a good chance of doing that, then that's what I'm gonna do. So to me, it's not a hard decision. It's a really, really easy decision that I made 13 years ago. So that's the answer on that. <laughs> so let me just get her to move just a little bit. <clears throat> so the question probably is now, what is CHOP treatment? And what is the cost? So let me tell you up front, I'm sure, I'm not a veterinarian, so I'm sure it's different for every dog, maybe in terms of size and all that. I, I don't know. I'm just assuming that. And it's probably different depending on what city you live in. That being said, I'm going to give you the information that I have that uh, we have gone through. So what is CHOP treatment? Um, I've got it here to make sure I have it all down for you, so I'm not doing it off the top of my head. Oh, no. Oops, let me just get her so she doesn't knock down the... Okay. All right, hold on. As you can see, she's much more active this time than she was on November 1st when we did the video with her. Do you want me to put her down? Um, yeah, let's take her down for a second so I can... Okay. Um... She wants to go party with her friends anyway. Uh, these are the party hats for some of her friends and some of the treats. Some of the cake's coming. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let, let me get into uh, what CHOP treatment is and how much it costs. So the C-H-O-P, each letter stands for a different type of drug. Um, I've got the drugs written down. Um, I don't need to, we don't need to talk about that. That's not important. Although off the top of my head, the P stands for prednisone. So that's one of them. So they take one drug per week and then they switch to the other drug for the next week. So what you have is, is a four week cycle of the four different drugs. And at the end of that four week cycle, they start over again. And then they do four cycles of those four weeks. So again, it's the same four drugs done four times, but they keep switching. I guess it's because they want to keep the cancer guessing. I, I think it, 
they become um, too resistant to it if you use it for too long. So they keep switching them out. And so here's how it works, at least how it works for us. So the first eight weeks is two cycles and they do it every week. Now, every week it costs, each treatment is $800. So quick math, as I'm looking at it here, is $6,400 for the first eight weeks. Now, this includes the blood tests before every chemo treatment. And it, well, that you need the blood test because the, uh, the dog, or at least in this case, Lola, may not be a candidate at that time, depending on their blood levels, if they can withstand chemo. Luckily for us, uh, Lola, she, she passed every, every time. So she was able to have all the treatments in a row. I think maybe there was one week that she didn't, but I'm pretty sure she made, made it through them all. For this $800, again, it includes the blood test, but it also includes anti-nausea pills, anti-diarrhea pills, and appetite stimulant medication which at sometimes she's needed that. About six, seven, eight days after the, a, a treatment, she, she would uh, maybe throw up here or there. But for the most part, she's, she's done really, really well. And the uh, anti-diarrhea pills, I think uh, we found out that if you used uh, organic pumpkin, that seems to help out There's a natural remedy. So that, that seems to work there too. So that's the first eight weeks. So you got eight weeks, you need $6,400. The next eight treatments are every other week. So that takes 16 weeks. And again, that's another $6,400. So it, at least the way I was thinking of it is, it gave me an extra week to be able to save money to be able to handle the, the treatment. So all in total, we're looking at $12,800 and the whole treatment is about six months. This is where it gets difficult because from what I've read, it says the average person might be willing to spend $3,000 to save a dog's life. And for whatever reason, the average person might want to spend $1,800 to save a cat's life. I don't want to look into that. You know, dogs, owners care more about their animals, whatever. That's a whole nother story. But what do you get for that money? And what have we gotten for that money? Uh, and here's the answer. So six months later, Lola is here. She's happy, she's healthy, and she's having a party. So that's, you know, that's most important, right? Not only is she alive, but her quality of life is really, really good. Actually, it's as good as, as it's been in a long time. I didn't realize that she was slowly getting sick. So this is, it's like having a new dog. Uh, number two, she's been in remission since week six. Uh, she's been eating normally. Uh, actually, she runs over to me <laughs> and she starts scratching my leg because she wants me to give her more food. So she's actually being a bully, which is normally like her. So that's kind of fun. She has her personality back. She barks at the big dogs and, you know, she'll go to the door sometimes to, to greet you. And she is, she's doing what she does. She has a personality back. Um, every day we go on non-goal-oriented walks at the park. What does that mean? It means that because in the beginning, she was not doing very well. She stopped walking and she wasn't doing that. And so I decided that instead of trying to walk her down the street and have, she would have, she was only maybe making it like one to two houses down the street. And then that was it. She'd stop and I'd pick her up and bring her back. I didn't realize, you know, I just thought it was age, you know, but now since the chemo treatments, what I do is, is that I bring it to the park and she likes the grass. She sits on the grass it's cool on her feet and it's near the water. So some days she's really active and she wants to go back onto the sidewalk and she'll walk like a mile down the road, a mile back. I'm not sure how far it is, but it's pretty far and she likes to do that. Other days she likes to sit by the lake and just kind of watch the ducks. I don't know how good her eyesight is, but she knows something's there or else she wouldn't be facing that. So she likes being around the ducks and the grass. Sometimes she likes to slide on her back and stuff like that on the grass. So she's having a good time. And so, you know, age has its privileges, right? So I'm not going to take her out. I'm not doing it for my cardio, right? It's for her. So if someday she just wants to meander in different circles around trees and stop to smell the flowers, so to speak. Actually, literally smell the flowers. I just sit there with her until she's done. And that's what we do. Uh, Lola now does not really pant at night at all. Uh, she sleeps through the night with no panting. Uh, the other, every once in a while she does, but it's because she sleeps with her tongue out. 
I think, and it gets really dry. And so what I'll do is I'll take her downstairs. She gets water, then she runs back up the stairs. She's ready to go. So I, I can't imagine it's a lymph node thing, but again, don't go by me. I'm not a veterinarian. I'm just going by what I see. And uh, what is it like to take a dog to chemo? Well, you know, we have a pandemic, so they don't allow anybody in. Uh, but I can go by what I've heard and how, what I've seen from Lola when she gets out. And here's the thing. It, Lola acts like chemo treatment is just a, a day at the spa. She loves it. Like from what I've heard from the, the vet techs is that she, she likes to be handled by people. She likes to be touched. She likes the attention. And if she doesn't get enough attention, she'll bark or howl to make people come over to her to, to say hi. I mean, so <laughs> she's like, she's got a bunch of friends there now, you know. And even this week when she graduated, they gave her a little bandana and stuff like that. And, they, you know, so we're going to do a real ceremony here. Yeah. But, um, you know, it's part of it. Uh, she gets her nails clipped there. Uh, yeah, there you go. I don't know if you could read that. read it. No. Um, yeah, so she's, she comes back, again, it's a day at the spa. She's had her, her nails done. You know, I get her, her tails wagging. You know, it, it's amazing. Uh, she has a lot of energy. And I need a little bit of help with this because I forget the name of the place. But uh, she goes to this place. I think it's called Shaggy Shake, if I'm getting the name right. And they've been doing her baths uh, for free in, in a section by herself so she doesn't have to be around other dogs. Help me out. Give her a name and phone number. Oh, Suds. Suds. I don't know the number offhand. It's in my phone. But it's Shaggy Shaggy Shake. It's on Buffalo uh, and Sahara. It's a local. Her name is Suds. And she does an amazing mm -hmm. job on all the dogs, too. And they've been really nice over there. So, again, Lola's been getting baths, getting her nails done. Like, She thinks she's going to spa every, every week or every other week now. So that's what we've gotten from the money that was spent. So well worth it as far as I'm concerned. Uh, here are some extras that I fear to throw in that uh, other people might want to know. Uh, Lola sleeps on the bed every night. Um, I have a humidifier on one side and I bring the nightstand over to the bed just in case, you know, like she rolls over, like back in the good old days, she could jump off the bed and all that, no problem. But now if she falls off, I don't, you know, that can cause major damage. So I bring the, the nightstand over. So if she were to roll to one side, she's on a nightstand. She's not going to hit the floor, number one. And I have the humidifier because like I said, um, her tongue is out, which most pugs are, but then losing some teeth that causes it even more. So she, her tongue gets very dry. And because of that, she needs water and then she'll start panting because she gets nervous. And then what happens is I have to take her downstairs. So the humidifier helps her with that. And sometimes I use aromatherapy there. Uh, one of them I use is to help calm her down for sleep. And the other one I use is to help her breathing. And the other extra, which is unrelated to the cancer, but uh, still something that uh, I think should be talked about because some old dogs have some situations. She has multiple drops that need to be put in her eyes um, at least uh, eight times a day, you know, with like a five minute break. And that helps out her uh, dry eye. And uh, whenever I think that there's a really difficult situation and you look and you keep looking at it and you get worried about it, I think sometimes if it's something you really want, you just push forward. And, you know, there's some opportunities in there for good things to break your way. And the, the two things here that I think have broken my way, uh, actually three things. Let, let me name three things. I just thought of one as I was thinking about it. Uh, number one, the pandemic has helped me two ways. Number one, I do most of my work from home because so I could see Lola all the time and I could see if there's a situation in, in her eating or whatever's going on. So I'm here all the time and I'm sure a dog sitting by yourself is not going to do as well as a dog who's loved and has, you know, human contact. That's number one. The pandemic is a good thing for that. Uh, number two, uh, because of the CARE Act, if you have a student loan, you don't have to pay it for a while with no penalty. And so the money that goes to, would have been going to that, I can stop that with no penalty and I can take that money and fun funnel it over to Lola's treatment for now. So the pandemic has actually helped this situation in, in two ways. And that's no disrespect to anybody else who's gone through a hard time with this, because uh, I understand that times are difficult out there and the pandemic has hit me in bad ways too. But um, 
I'm looking for the positives here, and those are definitely two positives. Uh, more time at home and, you know, a little extra. I, I don't have to pay as many bills. So those are two things. Uh, the other thing I want to throw in is something about emotional strength. Uh, I'm just a human being. Even though I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist, that doesn't stop me from feeling things and having to go through some difficult stuff. And I can't make a magic, uh, wave a magic wand and make everything good. Uh, I do understand the reality of the situation. Uh, Lola is in remission. It doesn't mean she's cured and no living thing is cured from thing. You know, being mortal has a 100% chance of you dying. So it's gonna happen one way or another. Uh, but so far it's been good. I've been able to give her uh, a longer life and a more uh, life with more quality for sure. But I'm definitely trying to uh, do the Buddhist thing here and live in the moment. Uh, why would I wanna do that? Well, cause every moment is important. That's number one. But, you know, I'm honestly, I, I'm not really sure what happens when she relapses because she might be resistant to the medication next time. And so this real happy feeling now is, is good, live in the moment. But I don't know where it's going to go. Um, I did talk to somebody the other day when I was at the oncology department and his dog was on his second round of CHOP treatment after having three months in remission. So I don't know. Um, I don't know exactly. I mean, I do know how it's going to go eventually, but I, you know, it's, uh, I have to be strong enough to be able to face that and to understand that situation. Uh, let me throw in one more thing about money. Uh, again, I understand money's tight. Money's difficult for a lot of people. I've had times in my life that it's been super difficult, but one of the questions does come up though. You know, it's like, you know, how do you have the money? You know, how are you going to get the money to pay for this and all this? Um, Again, it's something I think a lot of it is just personal responsibility. If you have a living thing and you're responsible for it, it's kind of irresponsible to spend your money on lots of other things and not leave any extra money for the people or for the animals or for anybody else that's dependent upon you. You might have to take care of them at some point. So I'm always holding a little bit of money back. Keep in mind, you don't have to be rich. Uh, she's 13 years old. I've been putting away money for 13 years, waiting for something like this because you never know what it's gonna happen because I live in fear of disappointing and I don't wanna like look at her and be like, well, listen, I'm gonna let you die now because there are things we can do. I just decided to spend it on other stuff. <laughs> you know, I can't, I can't just watch her die that way. So I'm going to do everything that's within my capabilities of a man and as a human being to be able to protect her and to be able to do what I can. And so that, that's what I do from my side. Anyway, uh, let me finish this up. Today is a great day. Lola is alive. She's got friends coming over. She's got her treats. She's got her party hat. And today's a good day. I, I, you know, I, with this situation, I, I never thought it would be this way. Um, I thought we were looking at just, like I said, two weeks maybe. But now we've got six months and she's, she's really good. So thanks for listening. I hope you found today's show valuable in any way. If you did, hopefully you can subscribe, maybe tell a friend. If anybody else is going through this, uh, you might want to send this video to them if you can. Uh, that would be nice for them, for me too, actually. Um, thank you, and um, I will see you next time.